Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Today, once again, we're talking about body armor. I know it's becoming a tired subject, but there's a few questions that keep coming up, and today I want to address one of those. And that is the question of, if you're wearing body armor and you get shot, and the body armor stops the bullet, how much damage are you still going to incur? Now that's a good question. Testing it, however, can be difficult. Obviously, it would be irresponsible to put the body armor on somebody and then shoot them. And for as fun as it would be to go down to the petting zoo and put the body armor on a goat and then shoot him, yeah, we're not going to do that either. So what we are going to do is put the body armor on the meat target. Now, forgive the redundancy, but for those who haven't seen this before, the meat target is pork chops to simulate a pectoral muscle, followed by pork ribs and then the watermelon lung tissue. When we're testing penetration and that kind of thing, we'll put more ribs on the back. But for today, since the body armor is going to stop the bullet, we're just going to use the front of the meat target. So let's put the body armor on the meat target and shoot it and see what happens. Now this piece of body armor does not have a rating on it like 3A, but it does have a list of calibers it's supposed to be able to stop, one of which is 9mm. So we'll shoot with our Beretta 92FS, and I've got it loaded with Remington green and white box 9x19, 115 grain full metal jacket and we'll shoot from seven yards. Well, our body armor stopped all three bullets, and although our pork chop pectoral is chewed up a little bit, none of the ribs are broken, and the watermelon is not damaged at all. So let's wrap this up again, and I'll try a larger caliber handgun. Now we'll try our Glock Model 22 in caliber 40 Smith & Wesson, and it's loaded with Remington green and white box, 180 grain full metal jacket. Well, our target fell over a little bit. I had to set it up again. So let's try shot number two. Again, the body armor stopped all three bullets, but this time there's a significant increase in damage. Our pork chop pectoral is chewed up a lot, and now one of our ribs is broken. But again, no damage to the watermelon. Now let's try a more powerful handgun. Now let's get serious. This is a Glock Model 20 in caliber 10 millimeter auto and I've got it loaded with Federal Premium 180 grain jacket at hollow points. Now let's see how much damage you would incur. So with the 10 millimeter, the body armor still stopped all three rounds and we see a lot of damage to our pork chop pectoral and under that where the bullets hit the ribs, broke them. But our watermelon is still intact. Now let's try something really powerful. Now I'll go back seven yards and I'll shoot this body armor with this Mossberg Model 500 shotgun. And what I've got it loaded with is Remington green and yellow box, 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one ounce rifled slug. Now let's see what kind of damage we can do. Well, the slug went through the body armor, went through the ribs, where it hit a rib, broke it, and that slug was actually stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Let me show you a close up of it. And there you can see that slug is mushroomed out flat. So I'll set this up again with a different type of body armor and see if I can get it to stop the slug. And now we'll try the seven yard slug drill again, but with some different body armor. Well, there's your ribs and a couple of them are broken. And there's your watermelon lung tissue. Now I'm not a doctor, I don't even play one on TV, but I think I can safely pronounce this patient dead. However, would it interest you to know that this body armor stopped that slug cold? Let me show you a close up of it. And there's the 12 gauge slug after hitting that body armor. So what can we take away from all of this? Well, several things. First, if you get shot with something powerful enough like the 12 gauge slug, it doesn't really matter that the body armor stopped the projectile. It looks like you'd have been most likely dead anyway. The only plus from that scenario was your body armor saved the guy behind you. But when you come down to the level of handgun calibers that the body armor was really intended to protect you against, with calibers like the 40 and the 10 millimeter, we saw a lot of damage to that pork chop pectoral and broken ribs. I mean, if you got shot, you would be a casualty. You would be wounded. But I think we can agree that the damage to our meat target with the body armor on was less than it would have been with the body armor off. So it looks like body armor is a good idea. However, there's downsides to body armor. Let me give you a couple of examples. One of my crew did two tours in the Middle East during which he had to, of course, carry a lot of heavy equipment, part of that being heavy body armor. And that was a significant contributing factor to the disc compression injuries that he had in his spine that he had to have surgery for later. Also, back in the 1970s when my father was a police officer and they were first starting to be issued this type of soft body armor, he wore it for a while, 
But back in those days when he wore a wool uniform and the car he drove did not have AC and even when they got AC it wasn't very good, he was miserable wearing that body armor and he finally quit wearing it. And what he said was, and I'll try to get the quote right, yeah, if somebody shoots me, I may die, but at least I'll die all at once. When I wear that body armor, I die a little every day. And that was something that occurred to me when I was in the Persian Gulf wearing heavy body armor. So body armor has its pluses, but it seems to have its minuses too. But again, I think we can agree that the damage to our meat target was less with the body armor on. So is body armor worth wearing? You be the judge.